Side. Yep, we are. But we have two sides and an angle. And I, I didn't label this one on purpose so that you could label it yourself the way that would make it easiest to use. There's two sides and one angle, and we discussed all the possible downfalls. This one falls into the category of having the angle between the two sides, which means we do not have an angle on its opposite side. So we cannot use the law of sines. We are stuck using law of cosines here. Remember, law of cosines is that c squared equals a squared plus b Perfect. It's the Pythagorean theorem with this little adjustment factor here for the fact that that's not a right angle. So it's easiest for us if the angle we're given is angle c. So we'll call the other angles A and B. So that makes this side little c, little a, little b. So now, c is what we're looking for here. a squared is going to be 18 squared. b squared will be 23 squared. Minus 2 times 18 times 23 times the cosine of 71 degrees. Now I'm going to punch this all in my calculator. And I'm going to do the square root to get rid of that squared, so I'm going to put that all under the square root sign. Okay? So I'm just going to do second square root. And I think you guys both have calculators that have the two-line display. Is yours a two-line display, Richard? Uh, there's like Hold. four line display. But... Okay, so you, you can put the whole thing in at once. Okay. There's some of the one-line displays where you can't. I'd have to show you a little bit different way of doing it. So you hit the square root, then 18x squared plus 23x squared Minus 2, oops, no squared on that, 2 times 18 times 23 times now the minus cosine. Cosine of 3 times 18. Minus 3 times 18. Nope, it doesn't have to be in parentheses because it's all multiplication, so the calculator should do that first. The only thing you have to have parentheses around is the 71 and the cosine. If your calculator automatically puts the open parentheses, you have to close it. So we hit equals and we get 24.154. Did yours work? The second time I did. Okay. I got 24.87148. Did you hit one number just slightly different? I got 24. I don't know why I wrote the 5 up there, it should be 4. 24.154. Now, of course, once we have that, now it's just the law of sines to find the angles. We have to use that 24.154 over the sine of 71 degrees. And which angle do we want to find first, A or B? Now, there is a correct answer here. The smaller one, which will be A. Back on the smaller side. <coughs> you label them differently? Okay. So it will be 18 over the sine of that angle, whether you have it listed as A or B. So we will cross multiply sine of 71 times 18. So sine of 71 times 18 divided by that answer. 0. 0.7046. So now we have to do an inverse sine. So A will be the inverse sine, 0. 0.7046. Second sign, second answer. 44.80 degrees. So this is 44.80 degrees. Which makes the other angle 64.20. Correct? Why did we always did we want to find this angle first? because it has the smaller side across from it. Now in this case, this side was bigger than this one anyway, so we knew this couldn't be an obtuse angle. But it's just good form to get in that habit of always using the smaller of the two sides to find its opposite angle first. That way you don't run into problems with running into an obtuse angle. For example, you can hit this one like this.
So I'm going to label this. Like that. So again, c squared, or c is going to equal the square root. I'm going to move the square squared over to the square root on the other side. 21 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 21 times 8 times the cosine of 32 degrees. So second, square root. 21 squared plus 8 squared minus 2 times 21 times 8 times cosine 32. 14.83 is what C is. Is everybody doing okay with finding that length now? Let's probably go over to 14.834. Now here, it would be to my benefit to find angle B up here first. So the 14.834 over the sine of 32 degrees is going to equal 8 over the sine of B. Cross multiply and divide. <clears throat> sine of 32 times 8 divided by previous answer, 0.2859. And we do an inverse sign. Gives us B is 16.61 degrees. Gives us A is 131.39 degrees by subtracting from 180. Now this one, I exaggerated. If this is 21 and this is 8, it's pretty obvious that this is most likely an obtuse angle. But by finding this angle first, the smaller angle first, it leaves no doubt in our mind because angle subtraction tells us that has to be obtuse. So we don't have to wonder, do we keep that angle? Do we take its complement or supplement? How do we do it? Now I'm going to show you an application of this law of cosines. It's maybe a little bit tricky. Everybody got that one down? You need to wait a second. You got her? The first couple of problems I just showed you, you can just punch numbers in and crank them out and you're good to go. This next one, not as easy. <clears throat> You have to do a little algebra in the formula. I give you all three sides of a triangle. Guess what? We can find an angle. Find angle C. And the only reason I'm doing angle C is because it fits easiest. The angle I'm looking for, it's easiest if I make it angle C. So now remember, C squared equals A squared plus B squared minus 2AB cosine C. So C is 23. A is 21. B is 18. So 2 times... 21 times 18 times the cosine of C. Now here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to treat the cosine of C here as though it's my variable, X. Does that make sense? Now can you see that same formula? B squared equals A squared oh, heck yeah. plus B squared yep. minus 2AB. Then cosine B. B. Yeah, if you put B here, this has to be angle B. If you put A here, this has to be angle A. Yep. Yeah, you can rearrange it. Yeah. You put C in, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's what I do. I don't bother relabeling stuff anymore. I can switch the formula around in my head and just switch the letters. But a lot of people, when they're starting out, they've got an old C. They've got to look here and find C and put it in. So, yeah, but if you can rearrange it, that is just fine. So, here, I'm going to treat the cosine of C as though it's my variable. That's going to be my X for right now. 
So 23 squared, 529. 21 squared, 441. 18 squared, 324. 2 times 21 times 18, 756. Right? You'll trust me. Okay. And then that's going to be your X. Remember, X is really the cosine of C, but I'm just going to put X there for now. Yeah, times X. So I can combine these two, but I cannot subtract the 756. Why not? Because it's multiplying X. Exactly. So this is 529 equals, I add those up, I get 765 minus 756 X. Now I'm solving this for X. So I'm going to subtract my 765. So that's gone. This is now going to be a negative 236. Right? Equals negative 756X. Now what do you think I'm going to do? Divide by a negative 756. Which makes this a positive. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. 236 divided by 756. 0.31217. Now that equals my x, but remember x is really the cosine of c, right? So to find c, it's an inverse cosine. So c is... Second, cosine, second, answer. 71.81 degrees. Just found angle C. What do you think? Easy? Well, the solving the equation is the hard part. And some people get confused by me putting X in here for cosine C. But most people struggle to solve for cosine C, so putting the X in there makes it look more like a regular equation. You know, I don't usually put the X in there when I'm just doing it myself. I do that to try to help students see that this is a variable that I'm solving for. But then when you're done, what you've found is the cosine C, so you have to do an inverse cosine. This is putting it all together and getting all the steps in it. Yes. Up a little bit. I gave you this assignment yesterday, but we'll write it down again for you. 382, 385, 18 to 42. Now you should know how to do all these. Um, there may, coming up soon, perhaps Tuesday, be a quiz on solving triangles with laws of sines and cosines. Because there's no class on Monday. You can take it Monday. I won't be here. Actually, I will be here. I have meetings Monday. What's the next meeting?